Hi everyone, in this video we will have a look at the timetable module in Fedina. You can find the timetable module under academics and there are basic settings that we will do before creating a timetable. That includes the creation of time set. So here we are going for the class timing sets and under class timing set there is a default one that is already available and I have created one more. So under this default one, you can create the class timing set that is available in the institution. Class timing set is nothing but the time in which the class starts in an institution and the time in which the class ends and the duration of each period in the class. So here I have created period one and have given a start time and an end time and a period two and a start time and an end time. So this way I have to create how my class timing sets are there in the institution. So let me create a new one. And by giving a name, here I've created a class timing set and inside the class timing set, I'm gonna create various class timings, for which I need to go for view class timings. And here I can add the class timings by going for add class timings. Here I'm gonna mention a name. It can be anything, whereas I'm giving a nomenclature as period one where I'm giving the start time as how it's there in my institution. Let me assume my classes starts at nine o'clock in the morning. So I'm giving a start time to be nine o'clock and the first period ends at 10 o'clock. So I'm giving the end time to be 10 o'clock and I'm going to create this. The next thing I'll do is that add class timing once again and create period two. And here you can see, Farina is asking me as an option, is this a break? I can enable this option if this particular period is a break period. Of course, this period is not a break, so I'm not enabling this option. Whereas I'm giving the start time and end time for period two, which is 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. I'm going to save this. Again, I'm gonna create another period, say period three, having a different start time and an end time and save. After all this, I'm gonna create a break, which is going to be for, let's say 20 minutes, which is starts from 12 o'clock in the morning. Now I'm gonna add one more, which is going to be the break. Let's say it starts from 12 o'clock and it's for 20 minutes. So I'm giving 12.20 as the end time. Provided I'm enabling this option is a break. So now let Fadina know that this is going to be a break period and others are the working hours. So here you can see by doing this, it's more easy for the timetable in Fadina to be created in a pattern with the working hours segregated from the break. So again, you can create periods with a start time and an end time. Let's say it starts at 12.20 and ends at one o'clock. And now I created the class timing sets. Moving back to the timetable, the next thing I'm gonna do is set weekdays and class timing sets. And here I'll have to select the particular course for which I'm doing it. I have to select the batch. And for this batch, I'm gonna select the weekdays. So it depends on your institution. If you're gonna start working on a Monday and work till Friday, you're gonna enable these days. And if you're going to work till Saturday, you have to enable that as well. And here again, you can assign different class timing sets for each day. That means you can assign different class durations for each day of the week. So here you can see I have the option to change it to any of the one that I've created before. So here you can see I'm going to assign the new one that I created from Monday to Friday and on Saturday, I'm gonna assign a different one. And by doing this, I'm going to save it. And once it's saved, I can move back to timetable by going for manage timetables. And here is where I'm gonna create the timetable. You can see there's no active timetables and I can also view the inactive timetables by going to for inactive timetables. So this will show the timetables that are not active right now, which you can utilize for further purpose. I'm going for active timetables where I'm gonna create one for which I'm gonna give the start date and the end date. Let's say the start date is 
29th to 7th of March. I'm creating it for a week's duration and you need to remember one thing when creating a timetable. There cannot be multiple timetables in a particular duration. There can be only one timetable. And now I'm going to create it. Let me go for timetable allocations and under timetable allocations, I'm going for one of those classes for which I have assigned the class timing sets, class one, and I'm going for manage allocations. So here you can see the timetable is not yet allocated. So I'm going for the allocations and here as how I've given in the class timing set from Monday to Friday, the class timing sets are created here. Whereas in Saturdays, a different class timing set is available. So this way you can assign class timing set for each of the day in a week and you can assign periods for them. So now I'm going to assign period for which now I'm going to assign subjects for these periods. For now, I'm going to select these cells and select one of the subject and I find two different employees here. I can assign both the employees as of now or a single employee. Let me assign one of the employees and you can see as I've assigned for the subject English, you can see the employee name, you can see the time duration for the class. The same thing can be done for other subjects and other employees. So here there is a warning message that pops up. When I'm making an allocation more than the criteria that I've provided while I created the subject. So while creating the subject English, I've given a maximum period limit. And now I've exceeded the limit and then it pops up a message. So if I want to continue with it, I can continue else I can cancel these. Again, I can continue with these allocations. Now, once the allocations are completed, you can go back to timetable and you can go for view timetable by selecting the timetable duration and the particular batch for which I made the allocation. You can have the look at the timetable. So here you can see the periods and the break that I've created and the period four. And on Saturday, you can see as how I have assigned in the class timing set two periods followed by a 10 minutes break. So this is how your timetable is going to look like where you can take a PDF report or a CSV report and pass it across to your students and employees. The next thing that we have is a teacher's timetable. But as I allocated the periods for the class one, you can see in this timetable duration, these are the employees who have been allocated classes and by selecting this employee's name I can see the timetable for this employee. So this teacher has classes from Monday to Wednesday and on each day the classes have been displayed here. The subject that the employee is going to be taking and the time duration in which the employee is taking class. They can take a PDF report or a CSV report right here. You can switch to other employees name to have a better idea about the timetable for that employee. The next option that we have in timetable is the work allotment. The recent change in the work allotment option allows us to make employee subject allocation from here. Apart from the option in the human resource module, we have the option to allocate employees by going for employee allocation. So here you can see the status is completely associated, partially associated or not associated. So let me go for not associated where I can go for employee allocation here. You can see two subjects and I have not assigned any employees yet for which I can select the department here. Let's say English department. I can assign one for English department. I can see the employees below. I'm going to assign one again for maths. I can assign by selecting the department. I see two employees and I can assign two employees or more. So now once the allocation is completed, going back to work allotment, you can see the status here is completely associated. The next thing that we have is the institution timetable. For the institution timetable, you can have a look at the overall timetables for all the batches available in the institution. So here, as there is only one timetable for this batch, you can see the timetable for today's date. 
I can switch to the next date and the previous date to have the look at the upcoming timetables and the previous timetables. Here in this timetable, you can see the start time and end time of the class. You can see the employee being assigned and the subject assigned. The next thing that we have is the timetable tracker. And under timetable tracker, the first option that we have is a swapping of timetables. The swapping is a case where the employee is not available to take class and you can assign another employee for that period. So this is a scenario that can be used for a day or two, but this is not going to make permanent changes in your timetable. So by selecting a batch, by selecting a date, let's say I'm doing it for today's date, I can change the employee, Sheena, for the subject English by going for this option, change. Let's say this employee is not available today in the institution, so I'm assigning a different employee for the department English. From the department English, I'm going to select a different employee, or I can select any other department from my drop down menu. Let's say I'm choosing a different subject altogether, so I'm choosing Max, I'm choosing a different employee, and I'm assigning the same subject, or I can assign the different subject. Let's say I'm assigning Max. The same thing can be done for any other subjects for a particular day. And the swappings can be tracked by going for swap timetable report. So here I can see for today's date or I can give a start time and an end time. And for a duration, I can see the swap timetable report. And below you can see the replacement status with the department and the employee name. You can take a CSV report of it right here or you can view the details. So now the details displays the plus one status. The plus one status represents that the employee has replaced another employee. So this employee, Keith, has replaced another employee for a period. So here you can see a two minus status. So two minus status represents this employee, Sheena, has been replaced by two other employees in two other occasions. So here you can see this employee has been replaced by another employee Keithi and in another period this employee Sheena has been replaced by another employee Sarah. So this is how the replacement status has been calculated here. You can take a report of this and share it across with your employees. The next thing that we have here is classroom allocations. Under classroom allocations we can manage your buildings by creating the buildings and the classrooms underneath. So you can go for manage buildings and you can add buildings by going for add buildings. And by doing that, you're going to give a name for the buildings and save it. Let's say I've created the building and inside the building, I can add classrooms by going for add classroom. Here, I'm going to give a name for the room and the capacity for that room. Let's say I've given a name and the capacity. This way, I can create as many classrooms that is available in the building. And once this is Created. The next thing I can do is allocate these classrooms for the subjects for a particular class. I can either go for a weekly allocation, which can be for a timetable range. Let's say the timetable range is for a month. For a week, I'm going to make allocations and the same allocations will be followed for the all the weeks of the month. So I can select a timetable range. I can view it. And now you can see for all the days of the week, I can select and make a particular allocation. Let's say I'm selecting one of the towers. I'm going to drag and drop the particular class and go for the allocation continue. So the same way I can do for all the days. If I'm going for date specific, it's going to be for a month and a year. I'm going to select and I'm going to view. And that means for each of these dates, I'm going to make an allocation manually. So here I can see the tower and the classes where I can drag and drop for a particular day. So this is going to be only for March 1st. So on March again, again I have to make a particular allocation. So this is how classroom allocation works. And the final option that we have here is manage subjects. So apart from the manage subjects option in your configuration settings, we have it under timetable right now, which, which allows you to create subjects under each class. So here you can go for a particular class or a course and a batch and manage the subjects that you've already created or create a new one. So you can go for add subjects 
or edit the subjects that you've already given or create a new elective group. So that's all about timetable module. Thanks for listening.